Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in this world for a very, very, very short time. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, the purpose of this life and death, the purpose of this creation is for us to be tested. Who of us will have the best of deeds? Who of us will follow the path of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And who will get too busy and too distracted by the luxuries and beauties of this world and forget about the hereafter and forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us and said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Verily this world is beautiful, green and alluring, attractive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you generations to follow each other in this world for him subhanahu wa ta'ala to see how you will act. What will you do? Beware of this world. Nowadays, my brothers, there's one very, very big problem we are facing. This big problem that is widespread is love and attachment to this world and preferring this world over the hereafter. When you ask people in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when you look in depth, you will find that people deep down in their hearts, they have a soft heart for Islam. Soft heart for deen. There's khair and goodness in all the hearts. There's this major problem. People are too busy for the deen of Allah. Everyone is distracted, taken by this world and its luxuries, you know, responsibilities. And slowly, slowly, shaitan has fooled many people in this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now there's no time for akhirah, no time for deen, no time for the mosque, no time for Quran, no time for da'wah, no time for qiyamul layl, no time for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are too busy for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated this as a fact. But verily, you prefer the, this worldly life. Although the hereafter is better and more lasting. Verily, you love the quick life, the one in your hand. And you neglect and forget about the hereafter. Verily, these people, they love this. They love this quick and early, you know, the first life. And they forget behind them a very, very heavy day. Judgment day, my brothers. So we say the Muslim has to fix his direction. Direction is the most important thing in our deen, my brothers. If the person focuses on the hereafter and his direction is the hereafter, everything in deen becomes clear. And dunya follows straight away. But if direction becomes worthy things, if direction and dreams and targets and concerns in the morning and the night all become accumulating money and building and buying and selling and businesses and marriage and wife and kids, which is all halal, but it should never distract the person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once passing by the market. Him and his companions radiallahu anhum. In the hadith, people are on both sides, you know, of the road, buying and selling. And the environment of the market is usually a worldly environment. Like, you know, khalas, there's love and attachment to dunya. People are there for profit. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to teach his companions a lesson. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spotted on the street a dead sheep. It had very, very, very small ease, which was a defect at the time. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, grabbed that sheep with its defective ease. And said to the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, who will buy this sheep from me for one silver coin? Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, said, Prophet of Allah, yani, why would you buy something as such? Why would you need it? So Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went a step further and said, who will take it home? Don't worry, don't worry, you don't want to pay the silver coin? No problem. Who will take it? The Prophet of Allah, if it was alive, it's defective. It's, something is wrong with it. How about when it's dead, ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Faqala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, this world with all its beauties and luxuries is so insignificant in Allah's sight, exactly like this sheep is insignificant to you. What does a dead sheep mean to me and you? It means nothing. It has no value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with this world as such. If, it's not the case, but if, 
If this world was equivalent to the wing of a mosquito in Allah's sight subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would have not given an infidel a sip of water in it. But this world is less valuable than the wing of a mosquito in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you ask any Muslim in our time, brother, sister, what do you prefer, the dunya or the hereafter? Everyone says, I've never, in all my religious life, I've never met a person who says, I'm a man of dunya. Everyone says, no, hereafter. Of course, I'm people of the hereafter. So we say to these brothers, there's no point. We will never cure a disease unless we admit we are sick. You know, if you go to a, someone who is very, very, very ill, and you want to treat him, but he is living in denial. He says, no, 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 I'm all right, leave me alone. He's living in denial. Many of us are living in denial. Saying, no, 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 alhamdulillah, everything is all right. I am better than others. Alhamdulillah, I pray. Alhamdulillah, I fast. Alhamdulillah, I pay my zakat. We say, brother, it's not only about this. It's about direction. It's about sacrifice. It's about how much time, how much focus do you have on your hereafter and how much focus you have on your dunya. What is more valuable in your heart? If you lose something in this world, a simple example. A person leaves his house one morning going to work. He goes downstairs. He, find, he finds out that his car got stolen. How upset and disturbed will this person be? How disturbed will he be for the rest of the day? Wallahi, some people for the rest of his life, every time he remembers the incident, he says, oh, if I only get my hands on that thief. You know, he's very, very angry, very disturbed. But the same person who claims he loves Akhirah more, if he misses Fajr Salat, how disturbed does he get? How much guilt does he feel in his heart? How long will that feeling of guilt last? Some people, you won't even feel guilty. Some people, maybe you'll feel a bit of guilt. They say, Allah, Allah, Ghafur Rahim, finished. Because Akhara is not as valuable in his heart. The Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, the two raka'at, not Fajr Salat, the two raka'at before Fajr, the Sunnah of Fajr, is more valuable than all the world and what it contains. These are the words of our Prophet. But is this meaning in our hearts? Really in our hearts? Are the two raka'at, sunnah of fajr, more valuable than the billions of this world? So if I come to you and say, brother, please, miss the sunnah of fajr. Don't pray today the sunnah of fajr, and I'll give you 1,000 riyals. What will you say? It's a sunnah. It's just not, there's no problem. So in your heart, the 1,000 riyals are more valuable than the sunnah of fajr. But the Prophet of Allah is saying, no, it is not only more valuable than a thousand years, it is more valuable than all the world and what it contains. But this is not in our heart because our hearts, they know the value of dunya. They know the bounties of dunya. But they forget about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They forget about deen and they forget about the hereafter. This is why there's no time. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always directed sahaba radiallahu anhu this understanding. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Three things follow the funeral. Watch any funeral and you will find the three things following. Any funeral passing by, you will find the family. The wife is crying, the children are crying, you know, his relatives are crying, everyone's dressed in black and they are in a sad scene, you know, walking with the funeral, following the funeral. وَمَالُهُ You can tell a rich man's funeral from a poor, poor man's funeral, you know. If he's a rich man, you find all the Mercedes and the BMWs and, you know, large, expensive cars all following the funeral in a very, very amazing sight, you know. Oh, this is someone important has died. Also, his, uh, his actions follow him. His family, his money, and his actions, his deen, his deeds. فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Two of them have to return. They have to leave you and go back. Your beloved wife, who you sacrificed everything for her, I gave her everything, even my deen. Even she asked for sin, disobedience of Allah, just to make her happy, no problem. Allah is Ghafur Rahim. How long will she sit beside you when you enter your grave? She will come, she will cry a bit, and then they will pull her and say, Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. Please strengthen yourself. Let's go back home. She will cry the first week very much. Second week less. After one month, even less. And after one year, she might get married again and forget about you completely. And your children the same. They say, I love you, dad. I love you, dad. I love you, dad. How much do they spend around you when you enter your grave? They will take you there. They will maybe shed a bit of tears. 
And then after 15, 20 minutes, they make dua and they all go, everyone to his life, to his wife, to his family. In our time, even before you die, they leave you and they go, you never see them again. But the only thing that stays with you is this deen, this a'mal, the work you did for the hereafter. This is what stays with you. This is where the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were focused. And this is what we are neglecting. This is what we have no time for. Every Muslim I've met in my life says he loves the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But put him to the test. Or if you love the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much Quran do you read in your day and night? How much time do you open the book of Allah and enjoy hearing the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, ah, oh, I love Quran, but I'm too busy. I have no time. I say, brother, if you love something, you make time for it. When you love something, it takes priority in your day. Likewise, if you love akhirah, if you love the hereafter and you're focused on the hereafter, you make time for the hereafter. But nowadays, no, we are too busy for the hereafter. Look at our mosques. The ulama say, if you want to know the love of the hereafter in people's hearts, you want to assess a society, go to their masajid and see how much love these people have for the hereafter. Nowadays, you go to the masjid, see, mashallah, in Jum'ah, Allahu Akbar, the mosque is full, people are standing outside. But come Fajr Salat, come Maghrib Salat, come Isha Salat, and you find much less numbers. Where are these Muslims who claim that their love for the Akhirah is big? Their attachment is to the hereafter, their loyalty is to the hereafter. They are too busy accumulating worldly things, and they do not respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our teacher and our prophet, he said in the authentic hadith, if people knew the reward, the reward they will get from praying Isha in the house of Allah, they will come even if they had to crawl. If you knew the reward, but the truth is the value is not there. If a person really is attached to the hereafter, what is more important than this? So if I make an announcement here in Al-Fanar, that inshallah, from now on, there's surplus in our budget. So anyone who prays Fajr in the mosque, we will give him 200 riyals. Dhuhr in the mosque, 200 riyals. Asr in the mosque, 200 riyals. Five times salah, you get a thousand riyals in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will anyone ask, is it fard? Will anyone say, uh, Shaykh, uh, yani, do I have to come? Wallahi al azim non-Muslim will line up. Non-Muslims will line up. Say, Shadu an la ilaha illallah, Shadu Ahmad Rasulullah. Why? Because people love this world, but they live in denial. They know the value of a dirham or a dinar, but they don't know the value of the hereafter. Had they been attached to the hereafter, they will never ask. Is 27 times more reward a better offer or just one reward? They will never ask. This is why Sahaba radiallahu anhu never asked these questions. The Prophet of Allah prayed in the mosque, we pray in the house of Allah. But they are all signs that our direction are this world. When we wake up in the morning, the concern is dunya. When you come to sleep at night, the concern is dunya. Sometimes because of dunya, because of worldly things, we have a sleepless night. Sometimes, you know, you see a brother in the morning, his face is yellow, his eyes are red. You can tell he hasn't slept. Say, what's wrong, brother? He says, oh... I have a big problem. I had a fight with my wife. I had a fight with my children. Or I'm in big debt. Everyone understands. Oh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, inshallah. We understand. But if you imagine if you see someone in the morning, his face is yellow, his eyes are red. Say, what's wrong, brother? He says, oh, well, I was afraid of uh, hellfire, you know, so I stayed up all night praying. What's wrong with you, man? Relax. Take it easy. People don't understand him. Why? Because staying up for dunya is understood, socially understood. But staying up for the hereafter, like Sahaba radiallahu anhu, Allah described them. Little of the night they used to sleep. Why? Because they are worried about the hereafter. They're worried about the akhirah. In the last third, the third of the, every single night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the last third remains, He calls out. Anyone has any need? Is anyone making dua? Anyone wants anything from me? And 99% of the Muslim ummah is snoring at that time. And then we wake up in the morning and we ask, where is the help of Allah? Why, is it, why are we such, in such humiliation? Such humiliation? What do you expect? Allah has been calling you for the past three hours and you have been snoring. And you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you? You are the one that's negligent of Allah. You are the one that has no time for deen anymore. You are the one that's too busy accumulating worldly things and, you know, building and buying. And although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, all this will be destroyed. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
look at the true knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know. The sign of true ilm is to understand these verses. Alamu, no, verily, no, that this world is but play, joy, entertainment, insignificant, decoration. Everyone boasts, oh, I have that many kids, oh, I have that much money. Have you seen my car? Have you seen my house? Accumulating and competing in money and children. All of this, Allah is saying, exactly like some rain that, you know, fell from the heavens. The farmers, when they saw the rain and they saw the vegetation, they got so happy. Oh, Akbar, look at the greenery. We are rich now. Then soon, this vegetation will turn yellow. But it will all be destroyed. Absolutely temporary, not lasting. It is not real. Really, the hereafter is the real life. When the person dies, you meet Allah, what do you say? He says, I wish, I wish I worked hard for my life. He understood only then that his true life is the life hereafter, not this temporary, insignificant world that he got too busy in from the hereafter, got too busy accumulating, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed it will be destroyed. Respected brothers in Islam, we have to come to terms with our own selves. Our ummah has a major disease love of this world and criticizing others. What are you doing about this deen? What are you doing about your own deen? What are you doing about your family's deen? What are you doing about your neighborhood's deen? What are you doing about your country's deen? What are you doing about the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Everyone says there's a lot of problems, but I am too busy. And everyone started pointing fingers and at others, at their mistakes, expecting them to work. This ummah is collapsing, my brothers. There's no time, no time for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no effort, no sacrifice, so deen is not spreading, deen is not rising. Everyone has to start with himself. Everyone has to blame his own self first. I am responsible. I am the one that has to change, not anyone else. I start with myself, I fix my relationship with Allah. I repent and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and focus on my hereafter. Pray two rakahat of tahajjud. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift the bala and help us in the problems that we are facing. Everyone starts with himself. I will go to the masjid. I will encourage the other brothers. I will go past, you know, and I will say, brother, come with me to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go to this lecture. Let's go to this talk. Let's learn Quran. Let's learn tajweed. Let's ponder over the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem now is that all people have no time. And the bigger problem is that they think that this will be a valid excuse on Judgment Day. Do you think that if you say to Allah on Judgment Day, when you get asked about this deen, you say, sorry Allah, I was too busy, I didn't have time. You think this is a valid excuse? You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, oh, I understand, inshallah, go to Jannah, go to Firdaus al-A'la. Allah created you for this purpose. This is the reason why you are here in this world. This is why, my brothers, I would like to share with you an amazing ayah. And read Surah Al-Munafiqoon. Surah, my brothers, is a very, very harsh surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah talks about hypocrites and their qualities. The hypocrites, when they come to you, they say, we believe you are the Prophet of Allah. We know you are the Prophet of Allah. Allah knows you are his Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies that these people are lying. And he goes on describing the qualities of hypocrites. You look at the appearance, mashallah, when they speak beautiful words. And then in the last couple of ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does an amazing thing. Instead of talking about hypocrites now, Allah addresses believers. He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Who is he talking to now? He's talking to me. And you, and every mu'min in the ummah. Ya Do not allow your money and your children to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. And he who falls in this mistake, verily, they will be the losers. Does anyone here or anyone we know have any other excuse? Same excuse. Brother, my children. Brother, my work. Brother, my money. Brother, this. Brother, that. I have no time for the deen of Allah. 
Say, brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already warned us that this excuse is invalid. It will not be accepted on judgment day. We have to make time for the deen of Allah. We have to make time for Quran. We have to make time for da'wah. We have to make time for salah in the masjid. We have to make time for tahajjud. We have to make time to help our Muslim brothers. We have to make this time. It is not optional. We have to make this time to stay on the path of deen, on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.